Wrestle Talk. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Lucan, and on this Friday we do not wear pink because I did not get the memo. But Barbie will make more money at the box office than Oppenheimer. With the exciting launch of threads yesterday, that hot new social media trend being the word on everybody's lips, apparently, we're actually going to start today's news by talking about TikTok of all things. And being wrestling YouTube's youngest and hippest broadcaster, I am... I know all about TikTok. It's been a hell of a week for Roman Reigns, taking his first pinfall loss since 2019. He's set to go on trial with the bloodline tonight, and now he's been banned from TikTok. That is arguably the most important one. Fans noticed that Reigns' official TikTok account had been banned, with common speculation being that TikTok has heavy regulations surrounding simulated violence on the platform. So perhaps a wrestling clip or something involving blood could have tipped him over the ban line. But despite the ban being permanent, according to the screenshot that Reigns himself posted, he was back before long, mocking the fact that you can't get rid of him that easily. Wrestling fans in 2016 know that all too much. So don't worry, he's back on TikTok. Still got pinned by Jey Uso though, didn't he, the big loser? Speaking of losers, and someone's gonna lose that lawsuit between MLW and WWE... It's not my best segue, but there has been a twist in the tale. After WWE's motion to dismiss the suit was rejected, WWE's longtime attorney Jerry McDivitt has removed himself from the case. This is because the 73-year-old wishes to retire before long, and this lawsuit sure is shaping up to be a long one. McDivitt noted in a statement to WrestleNomics, Since early 2022, I have been working towards retirement. I had hoped the court would again dismiss MLW's lawsuit as it did the first time when it did not, and it became obvious that the case was going to run into at least 2025 in all probability, I advised my client that I would be wrapping things up by year end. McDivitt is, no exaggeration, one of the most important people in WWE's history. Having helped the company through the steroid trial of 1994, the Owen Hart wrongful death lawsuit, the aftermath of Chris Benoit, and many, many concussion lawsuits. Without Jerry, WWE might not be the powerhouse that it is today. But like Transformers, there could be more to this story than meets the eye. Because it's not just Jerry that stepped down. The entire law firm representing WWE in this case, K&L Gates, has been removed. Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that WWE have instead hired a very high-powered law firm to take the case, which is the same law firm that is handling the Endeavor merger. Meltzer added WWE thought the MLW case was going to go away, and Jerry McDivitt wrote arguments to get the case dismissed and they were all rejected, so the case is going forward. You don't replace an entire firm unless there's something going on, and obviously Vince McMahon was not happy with that aspect of the case not going away. Moving over to AEW for a moment, and in two weeks' time, it will be Blood and Guts, or as an Omega chat we got on yesterday's Russell Talk podcast Dynamite review, mistyped it, Blood and Guides, which is what I might call it from now on because it's a perfect description of the match. Anyway, the excitement for Blood and Guys is high, but there are question marks around it. With Brian Danielson's injury from his Forbidden Door match, Blackpool Combat Club and Takeshita are down a member. And there's also a member missing from the Elite, which was once presumed to be Eddie Kingston, as he's involved in the storyline, but he'll actually be competing at this year's G1. Following this week's Dynamite, Kenny Omega spoke to the live crowd, where he all but said who will be taking the Elite Mystery Spot. There was a week when my whereabouts were unknown, I didn't stay home, I didn't go to Canada, but where I went was to recruit an old friend, someone who is very near and dear to my heart, and I've got no doubt in my mind that as much as he cares about me, he cares about this promotion. He cares about changing the face of professional wrestling. And at Blood and Guys in two weeks, there is no way we're going to lose. For those unaware, Kenny had a tag partner back in the day who wanted to change the face of professional wrestling alongside him, and his name was Kota Ibushi. And we may finally be seeing the AEW debut of Kota Ibushi. And if it isn't him, then Kenny, don't tease me like that, you little flirt. But it would appear 
This is no flirting matter. Fightful Select are reporting that conversations have taken place between Kota Ibushi and All Elite Wrestling. Fightful Select spoke to talent within AEW who are under the impression that he will be part of Blood and Guys, as well as a source close to Ibushi in Japan saying he's planning to work the upcoming AEW show. There had been some speculation that Ibushi signing with AEW could cause some strain on their relationship with New Japan as Ibushi left that promotion on bad terms. However, it's being reported that those issues have been resolved. That still leaves a spot open for Blackpool Combat Club for the Blood and Guys match, and perhaps it could be a member of the Dark Order, because they've been a big presence in the story. I mean, it's it, it's not likely, but my fantasy booking mind can dream how Luke should book. That's our new series, which could either be John Silver, Annex Reynolds, Evil Uno, or Cole Cabana. Yeah, I bet you all forgot he was in the Dark Order as well. Cabana, who was of course a massive figure in CM Punk's differences with the Elite, has not been working on the AEW side much at all in the last couple of years, instead being moved over to Ring of Honor early last year and working there primarily in the producer role, with the occasional in-ring appearance here and there. However, that may be set to change according to Fightful Select. Cabana was, in fact, backstage at this week's AEW Dynamite in Edmonton. The report states Cabana returned in a producer slash coach capacity, although Fightful couldn't specify what match exactly Cabana was involved in. Cabana last appeared on AEW TV in November 2022 when he answered the then Ring of Honor champion Chris Jericho's open challenge on Dynamite. And while it's unclear right now, now, the report also very interestingly suggests that more AEW appearances could be in the future for Boom Boom Cabana. Just don't expect them to come on Saturday night and maybe don't expect much from one Bill Phil on Wednesdays for that matter as well. While Cabana isn't anticipated to be appearing on AEW Collision anytime soon, one name that has been advertised for a return at some point is the former AEW Women's World Champion, Thunder Rosa. Rosa is approaching almost a year on the shelf with a serious back injury, and she gave an update on her recovery via her latest YouTube vlog, where she sat down with AEW's doc, Michael Sampson, to run down the latest news on her injury. Sampson gave a positive update on Rosa's status, saying that recent MRIs have shown good progress, with Rosa now pain-free. Despite this, there are still lingering issues with Rosa's injury, with Samson explaining that she could still be out for another four to six weeks. So it seems that Rosa isn't quite there yet. However, things are certainly looking up, especially with All In and All Out just around the corner. We here at Rest Talk would like to continue to offer our well wishes to Rosa in her recovery. You got this and you rule. While Collision may be down one Thunder Rosa at present, its most recent episode was also majorly down on the overall viewership and that key 18 to 49 demo. As we talked about on yesterday's Wrestle Talk news, the Collision ratings were rather disastrous this week after already dropping off pretty hard from its June 17th premiere. For its June 24th show, the most recent episode did what many would call rampage numbers with 452 thousand viewers and a point 13 in the 18 to 49 demo. That is a difference of 364,000 viewers from the debut episode and its third week. Now arguments could be made that it's 4th of July weekend. NXT was also down because that aired on the actual 4th of July, but there's no two ways about it. That is not a good number. And this number saw former WWE play-by-play -play announcer and, surprising fact, two-time Royal Rumble participant Jonathan Coachman chime in to pretty much call Collision a bad idea. Now, Coach had been vocal about Collision on Saturday nights before it even launched and was using this bad number to get a gotcha moment by saying, wrestling shoes, I'm gonna assume he means shows here, otherwise this is a very different story. Do not work on Saturdays. Never have, never will. Now you can all try and come up with something else, but try and understand some of us who are in the business kind of know what we're talking about. Coach is of course correct. There's absolutely no history of wrestling shows or shoes working on Saturday nights. None whatsoever, you know, apart from uh, five decades of it working as well as WWE and UFC running pay-per-views on Saturday nights quite successfully. Yep, never have, never will work indeed. But I'm just wrestling YouTube's youngest and hippest broadcaster 
What do I know? Well, a lot less than Dax Harwood, who is in the industry, and he replied to Coachman saying, I know you know how Monday nights work, but maybe you'll give us more than three weeks to make this work. If not, you're more than welcome to tell me I'm wrong. With this week's show headlined by Samoa Joe vs CM Punk, another low number would likely spell panic stations for AEW, but let's wait and see, as Dax says, it's early days. I mentioned that NXT ratings were down this week because it was the 4th of July, but they were still better than Collisions as it drew 508,000 viewers. It's the lowest viewership for an episode of NXT on USA Network, but still, it's better than Collision, LOL. One of the contributing factors to NXT's recent successes in the ratings has been the integration of main roster talent, which has been abundantly an obvious good idea for the past seven years. With Seth Rollins defending his title against Bron Breaker a few weeks back, Judgment Day are announced for next week's episode, and names like Baron Corbin, Mustafa Ali, and Dana Brooke have made the move to Wednesday nights without returning to either Mondays or Fridays. Mustafa Ali is having a great matches with the likes of Tyler Bate, Dana Brooke is getting way more TV time, and Baron Corbin returned to his lone wolf gimmick for his NXT match against Carmelo Hayes with a tease this week that we're going to get a new Baron Corbin on the horizon. And that might be because, like Apollo Crews before him, he's made the move from the main roster to NXT for the foreseeable future. Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, he's a regular now in NXT, and there's going to be more people like that. So that's good news for Cameron Grimes, because now he won't be sucked into Corbin's mid-card black hole vortex after all. Yay! That's all from me. Our next episode of our playthrough of AEW's Fight Forever's Road to Elite Mode goes live tomorrow over on Parts of Unknown, so check out this clip from this week's episode. <laughs> Jump to the outside. I've had enough of this. My <laughs> planet needs it's me! <laughs> I have to go now. <laughs> Look at me and Trent working together.